As a Next.js application developer, you must be hearing about server component and server action a lot. If you are a newbie to Next.js, you might be even confused like where to use server component, where to use server actions, are there places where server component and server action might be replaceable, they are doing same job or they are entirely different, when to use what. These questions are obvious, I keep getting them on my DM and then I thought okay let's clarify that over a video explaining with some of the examples about server component server action, their usages and also to talk about a few things that you have to keep in mind while you are building production level application. We are going to learn a little bit about a client server thing, very high level. Then why server component, why server action, how to write them, when to use what and there are few things to note as I said that you need to know before you start using them very freely for your production deployed application. And of course we'll end this video with what next. I'm Tapas Adhikari, a developer, a creator, almost like two decades of experience teaching you with everything that I know. It would be great if you can subscribe to my channel because that's going to motivate me to create great content. Before we get into understanding server components and the server actions and their differences, let's understand the client server thing at a high level. A server it known for serving something and a client it known for requesting something. Client is nothing but the browsers, the handle devices or anything that is user interfacing want to act on data that is produced by the services that resides on the server, think in that way. So if you need a user list for example to show on your browser, the user list might be residing somewhere in the backend database and a server is responsible for fetching that user list for you and pass it to the client when client requests for this. So client requests to the server for something, some resources and then server computes, fetch or whatever it has to do, it will do that and send a response back to client. Once client receives the response, it will act on that. So at a very high level, that's what client server thing. Now let's zoom into the server part. What are the responsibilities that a server will perform? So there are many, many more responsibilities, but let's highlight some of them. So once a client make a request to server, server has to handle the client's request. That's the first and foremost job. That's why it is known as server because it is going to serve something. What is going to serve? Is going to serve a client's request. Then it will respond with either data or some kind of content or if there is a failure it will respond with error. So that client either get the data that is looking for or the content it is looking for or if the data and content is missing or it is at least know that there is an error happen at the server side and then client has to show that error to its end user. Then Server also does handling services. For example, you have to send an email or you have to create a PDF, you have to create an invoice or you have to update database or you have to delete a user. So different kind of services as you want, the server will be responsible for doing that. Once server takes care of the services, it has to respond back to the client with the service outcome. Whether the email has been sent, a PDF is created means the PDF has to be downloaded on the client, all this kind of thing. Then server is also responsible for managing access control. It means who needs to access what and then stopping any kind of illegal access to any of the resources. That's where authorization, authentication, all this part comes. For that I have already created a separate video. You can take a look into it for an in-depth understanding of those processes. Then it can store and manage data. It can enforce security like that. It can do multiple such work that you probably won't be able to carry out at the client side. That's why you give this task to a server and the server performs it. Among all this, let's focus again, again zoom in little further to the one which marked in green color. I read it out. Respond with data content or error or handling services. This is where we will be connecting the dots to the server component and the server actions. With all the responsibilities of the server that we understood so far, let's dive into React server component. So the React server components are nothing but the React components that you can render on server. So what is a component in React? A component in a React is a single unit of your user interface 
which provides a part of your user interface sometime with some amount of logic and at times it might not have any logic just the representation so that's what the component we know as a whole same thing instead of you are having those components or rendering those components on the client side these components are rendered on the server side as these components can be rendered on the server side there are some advantages to it the advantages are usually our server the data store and the database will be co-located so that means these components are near to those data stores or the databases so it means that to get the data for this component it is much much easier than a client side component which has to go or which has to make call over the network using using a request to fetch some data and then need to bake the component accordingly. But in case of React server components, as those are co-located to your data store or the database, they can easily get those data and can bake themselves with the required content. And that is why our React server component or a server component in Next.js is so, so rich with SEO because once you get this component back, in turn the UI back, it is already having all the required content or most of the section filled with all the data that is required. So when the things are coming on the browser, it is already content rich. What it is missing? It is definitely missing the user interaction or the interactivity because on server, there is no interaction or the interactivity. The button, the menu, the radio button, the checkbox, all these interactivity are on the client side. So that is where react renders the server components into a special data format that is known as rsc payload react server component payload whenever a react component renders whether it is a client side or server side it renders like a tree we know that there is a component hierarchy and renders like a tree the rsc payload is the binary representation of the rendered react server components tree so it's a binary representation of that so react server component will have a tree representation that tree representations binary format is the rsc payload so when this rsc payload reaches at the client side react update the browser's dom accordingly what rsc payload contains it contains the of course the rendered result of the server component that's what we spoke and then it will also contain some placeholder or the slot where the client component should be rendered in the hierarchy okay it's because wherever you have to place the interaction you will be placing those in the client component so server component can have client component within that so rsc will also contain the placeholder for those client components that should be rendered and the reference with the server component into the component hierarchy also if there are any props from the server component to client component passed that information also will be in the rsc just to clarify a react server component is a component it means that it's a single unit of user interface sometime with the business logic sometime may not be with the business logic but it is rendered and baked at the server side so that it is content rich seo friendly and then it is sent through the client side using the rsc payload on top of that next is acts on it and make things rendered for us now if i talk about the server actions as you are seeing over here that i have now changed those react component with something called fn fn stand for functions what are functions functions are very simple thing that instead of repeating the instructions again and again you put the instruction in something called a function give a name and call that function by its name in the multiple places where you are supposed to call the set of instructions every time so that you gain reusability and the functional programming is an awesome thing that is going to reduce a lot of code otherwise now the call out over here is that the server actions are nothing but the simple functions that run on the server so these functions will be capable of doing any kind of work for example a function can update something on the database a function can create something in the database delete something in the database a function can send an email a function can generate a pdf a function can create an invoice so the function can be for any purpose that based on someone's use case now the difference over here with the regular function and this function is that this function resides and executes on a server and this function can be invoked from both client side react component and the server side react component okay so a clear differentiation between a 
react server component and a server action is a react server component is a component as a whole it has its ui part as well whereas a server action is a standalone functionality that you want to write and execute on the server what it respond once the server action execution is done it might return back with some kind of data the data could be like the number of users that is updated or a stream as part of a pdf download or could be an error message because of the action run out of an error so it could be anything as such right but there is a clear differentiation between a server component and a server action so by default every component you create in nextjs especially with nextjs app router is a server component unless you explicitly tell that a component you need as a client component so for example i have a src app folder inside that there is a page.js i have not done anything to tell that this particular component has to be a server component because by default this component is a server component and is considered by nextjs so it means whenever i go to this particular page whatever we just now learned as a server component all these things will happen this particular component will be rendered on the server the rsc payload will be sent and then the next is kick in then the javascript instructions will be used to hydrate the client components and finally the application will become interactive so a simple react component when you write it in the next js application this become a server component but if you have to make it a client component you have to use this directory called use client to tell nextjs explicitly that i want to make this component as a client component whereas an action if you want to write you have to use this directive called use server whenever you use this directive called use server the nextjs will know that you are now going to give action a server action to nextjs to handle and as we have learned some time back that a server action is nothing but a function you will be creating an action as a function and it has to be an asynchronous function that's why you will be giving this async as the keyword and then inside the function all your business logic goes into what this function is doing this server action is getting a new to do and then making a post call to a backend service to add this new to do back this is what this is doing it's some kind of mutation that's what it is doing but here you can do like sending an email you can do a logic of creating a pdf all this kind of things that, that you can do and as you have seen in case of a server component it is a fully baked component a fully baked react component but in terms of a server action it is nothing but a stand alone function stand alone javascript function with a few rule that there should be a use server directive and it has to be async i hope it makes sense now as you know what a server component is what a server action is how they differ structurally let us quickly talk about when to use a server component and when to use a server action the clear call is that whenever you are developing a user interface which needs a jsx might need some kind of business logic in it might need to create a part of a user interface but you want that user interface to be built on the server because you care for seo you want to bake all the content in that component well ahead it comes to the client side or on your browser so that your client don't have to again download the required javascript do all kind of magic to make this component bake this component at the client side rather you want this component to be baked completely at the server side and then want to download and then want to see the stuff in that case you will straight away go for server components but if your need is like that that your component has a lot of interactions for example it has buttons it has menu items check boxes radio button where user will interact user will click mouse over all these things you won't go for server components because at the server side you don't have the browser as you don't have the browser there you don't have the handlers or the actions or the event for each of this button menu checkbox radio button etc those are existing only at the client side so if your component demands those you won't be creating a server component rather you will be going for a client component but if your component is more data rich where you care for the data you want your component to be more co-located to your data source near to your data source so that you can save on that network round trip 
you will be choosing for server components okay now for server action whenever you need to say update a database or you you have to do some standalone functional things sending an email creating a pdf those actions are independent standalone functions in those cases you will be creating server actions now these server actions can be called from a client side code or the client side component using the form it can also be called from a server side component so server components and the server actions are completely two different thing one is a component fundamentally another is the function fundamentally so i hope to you now server components and the server actions are quite clear from the user's perspective now last but not the least one important call out anything that you develop especially for your production code not for your side projects for side projects anything is fine but something that you want to deploy and you want your user real user to use you have to take this call little intelligently like what kind of components that you want to go for are you going to go for a client component are you going to go for a server component or when you have to go for a server action what are the things that you need to keep in mind see nothing is free you will be developing this application at the end of the day you have to deploy this application somewhere you will be deploying it on vercel render netlify somewhere right these things are available for you but at a cost for example if you create a server action and your server action is being used in your application and when this application get deployed let's say vercel netlify wherever the execution of the function is having a cost now you have to be mindful that who is going to manage this cost or you have to be prepared that it will be costing me something as and when users started using it there might be a free tier with which it will be free but once you exhaust that you will be charged for your server action execution so be mindful when you are picking up things that it might cost you is this something really you want to use or you might want to use but it is with a cost that you have to bear that's the first thing second thing if you just start creating everything as a server component or thinking about creating a server component great because you are winning on seo you are making things content rich your application might be like that but you have to make your server also capable to process that so that processing power the amount of things that you will be putting on the server that load management and everything that you have to keep in mind it might happen that in certain cases your component doesn't make sense to be a server component because it's okay sometime to have it as a client side component you need to know to make that differentiation very very clearly so in nexus application when you are developing your component or the component hierarchy make sure that you you start pushing your client components at the bottom of your component hierarchy as much as possible at the top of your component hierarchy should be the server components as much as possible that's where you will be dealing with the data rendering the data and in the client side component you will be putting the interactions so next i am going to come up with a pattern a design pattern one of the design pattern where the server components client components how it can be dealt together how you should be architecting your solution in terms of different kind of components when you're working with the next stage stay tuned to that so talking about the server component and the server actions let me tell you that i have created a couple of videos in depth for these things a crash course to make you understand different patterns with server actions and a deep dive to server components that takes you from the client component to the server components with lot of visuals and a project you might want to take a look into that we'll be back soon until then stay well please like this video please put a comment and don't forget to subscribe thank you